looks like a... want to see the Alliance map. I have changed my mind. I should go. Gods of Asgard, what happened to this place? What's happened here? Eivor's here! Thank the gods above! Though it seems they have forsaken us. I am sorry to tell you, Eivor, Tekla is gone. What? Dead? No, no, no. She's on an errand and left her apprentice in charge. It was him who did all this. Who is this, a princess? A fellow called Ake. He'll know what happened here. You need to find him. Me? Why not you? Somebody's got to clean up this mess. Besides, I'm startlingly drunk. You go on. My cup has run dry. How is anyone meant to survive without something to drink? I need to drown my sorrows! Eivor, did Basim contact you in Norway? He said he would be joining you. Yet here you are, and I have no word from him. Hytham, this will be hard to hear, but Basim attacked us in Norway. Vengeance for some transgression of ours, imagined or real. You mean... You mean you slew him yourself? Sigurd and I, together. I know this comes as a... I do not understand. Why would he do such a thing? He loved Sigurd. He loved you. I do not understand it myself. Perhaps one day we can speak about this with more clarity. But for now, I am deeply sorry. 
I cleared Winchester of the Order, yet to do so meant working with King Alfred. Your poor fellow soldier led you to the King of Wessex? How very strange. He, or she, is toying with you, it seems. Keep this. It serves your cause better than it does my bucket. Ah, good. I hope this one did not give you too much trouble. As a token of my deep gratitude, I want you to have this. Thank you. I have to go. Then go in peace. Thought you'd be a good child. About you and Bridget, when do you wish to be wed? The sooner I can make her my wife, the happier I will be. But we are fine to wait until everything has settled here. Enough waiting. Cool your forge and cover your anvil. Let's get you married. Wonderful. Shall we gather everyone? Gather your wife and your courage. I will bring the people together. I am honored to stand before you, Gunner, Bridget, on this bountiful day. To celebrate the strength of your bond and to see you wed. I am in witness of a love that inspires and empowers. I invite you now to speak your vows. <laughs> to you, my darling Bridget, I offer this blade, forged in flames that burn as brightly as my heart does for you. A blade as sharp as your wit, as glinting as your beauty. May it sing through the air as sweetly as your voice meets my ears. Dio, see it with your courage, Gunnar. To never am luckiest would be the door of heat to tea and Harriet. And I, you, I give you my sword and my promise that I will stand at your side forever. Heed for the brother and future and heed, and the sword tawaloch in hope and premonition. And the amount of scrying and foresight para toivi a sweeping adventure and meeting tea. Tiur enoid fel dimarall, a dyn a strong a bwrdd i chi, ac fel as i ffiws, mae'r calon yn hedfan dyr y ti. Such poetry, oh dear. You make me cry, my love. Let us hedfan efo'n gilydd, tro bywyd yn beyond. I offer you this ring, and take yours in kind. I will wear it with pride and honor, warmed by the love of so perfect a lady. And I whisk of a Valkalon, adoration of feed and myth. This is the greatest day of my life. Embrace me, my love. <laughs> With our couple now bonded in matrimony, now we drink.
Randvi, saw you looking a little lonely. Thought I might come and join you. How nice. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I never thought I would see gruff old Gunnar so enraptured by a woman. Enraptured by anything, for that matter. He's a hard one to read, but I am pleased for him, and for this day of rest and respite. After everything, a few days of feasting will do the people some good. They need this. They do. Will you walk with me? Anywhere. Lead on. Something has been on my mind for some time. I am no seer, but I foresaw this day long ago. Not Kuna's marriage, but our situation. Our success. How do you mean, our success? I mean to say that I saw our settlement flourishing, through our victories in war and in diplomacy. And from the day we set out from Norway, I knew that you would make a fitter leader than Sigurd. It was never in his character to lead. It was always within yours. I see. Do you? You might have warned me. You would not have listened. Fair. I do hope you see it now, in all that you have done for us. Randvi, you and the people here have done more for me than I could ever repay. I am honored by your faith in me, and your confidence. As I am honored by your friendship. And I by yours. Eivor, I want you to know that Sigurd and I are... We are severing the bonds of our marriage. We share a love that is steadfast, and I have faith it will forever be so. But it is not the love of a wife and her husband. It was not an easy decision. But after we talked with honesty, we embraced more warmly than we have in a great while. I think we will be happy. I hope so. And I am pleased for you. I am pleased for myself. Sigurd's desires are bigger than any man or woman can offer. He longs for something more. And what about you? What are you looking for? I have all I need right here. With you. With our people. I want to say, Ranvi... I love you, and I have for some time. I did not pursue it, but wanting to betray my brother's trust. That does not mean I did not desire it. Does that surprise you? Gods, I worried you saw me as a woman starved for the affection of her husband. That it was loneliness driving me. But it was you, Eivor. Only you. Everything you are, everything you will become. Randvi. Without you, I would have lost my way a thousand times. I never told him outright, but I doubt he will be surprised. I think he may have suspected it even, some time ago. If he suspected it, he never said anything. He is more observant than I often give him credit for. I believe he sees us as we are, and as we hope to be. We can wait to tell him. Give it a few days, when the feasting is over and everything is settled. Agreed. I have waited long enough for you, and you for me. That is another few days. The blink of an eye. Shall we find our way back to the wedding? Bridget might give another speech. We must not miss that. About that? I have not understood a single word of her since Gloucestershire. Really? I find she speaks beautifully. With poetry, even. Are you kidding? Am I? Come, we should go.
I have the plans you need. Good, good. Once added to the elixir, it will be ready to drink. In taking this, you will have access to the All Father's wisdom. You will walk the path of Odin and live as he lived so long ago. Prepare yourself for a journey into another time, another plane. The elixir is ready. It will taste like misery itself, but it will open your mind to the sights and sounds of the Nine Worlds. Prophecies of the Nornir are as clear as daylight. The Aesir are doomed. All Asgard is doomed. Repeat the last passage. Brothers will fight one another and kill one another. The home of the gods turns red with gore. It will be an age of storms. An age of wolves. Not this. Further along. The foretelling of a wolf great beast. The wolf Fenrir howls terribly before the gates to hell. The beast will break its bonds and run. And my part? What about me? Then comes the second great sorrow. When the Harvey goes to fight the wolf and falls to Fenrir. And falls to Fenrir. It's there, you see. You have foretold my death. Your Harvey will die. We speak what we see. We know your fate, your destiny. Have you gleaned enough, O oh wise one? Fate governs all humankind, but I am the defier of death. I am not bound by these forces. All threads are measured. Everything dies. Even ancient Ymir whose fertile carcass gave birth to the Nine Worlds. I am no string to be plucked or tied. I am the High One, the Lord of Ecstasy, the enemy of the Wolf. I am eternal. Riddled words only cloud my thoughts. A storm is brewing, not in the clouds, but down below. Does our final battle draw near? Is this how Ragnarok begins?